This video is going to provide a brief review of complex numbers for use in quantum chemistry. So as you may recall, a complex number z is defined as a number that has both real and imaginary parts. So something like z equals a plus ib. So a is the real part, b is the imaginary part, and i is equal to the square root of minus 1. So an example might be something like z equals 3 plus 5i. Now when you're working with complex numbers, powers of i come up a lot. So as a bit of an aside, it's worth you getting practice with and being familiar with the results of taking various powers of i, things like i squared, i cubed, and so on. So you might, for example, try to convince yourself that i squared, which is just the square root of minus 1 squared, is equal to negative 1. i cubed is equal to minus i. i to the fourth is equal to 1, etc. All right. Anyway, so we're going to focus on these complex numbers one form, as I said, of writing these is z equals 3 plus 5i. But another form is to write these as something like z equals r times e to the i theta. Now there's a famous identity that says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And so r times e to the i theta is just equal to r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. Now you can think of complex numbers as being vectors in a two-dimensional system, the so-called complex plane, where on the x-axis you have the real part, and on the y-axis you have the imaginary part. And so z is some vector in that plane, where we have our a, or real component, and along x, and b, the imaginary component, along y. If you compare these two forms, what you realize then is that r cosine theta just corresponds to the x part, or a, and r sine theta gives us the b part, or the y, or imaginary component of the complex number. So both these forms, z equals a plus ib, and z equals r times e to the i theta, are equivalent. They're just different ways of representing the same complex number. Now often you may need to convert between these two representations of complex numbers. So for example, suppose you have five, z equals five times e to the i pi over six, and you want to convert that to the form of z equals a plus ib. What are the values of a and b? Well to do this, we just need to go ahead and use that those identities I gave you on the previous slide. And so z equals r the i r times e to the i theta is equal to r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. And so r in this case is equal to 5, so we plug in 5 here and here, and theta is equal to pi over 6, so we plug that in here and here. Go ahead and evaluate cosine pi over 6, that's square root of 3 over 2, sine of pi over 6 is a half, and so what we end up with is we get 5 times square root of 3 over 2 plus i times 5 over 2. So a equals 5 square root of 3 over 2 and b equals 5 halves. If you want another example, consider z equals 2 times e to the i times 3 pi over 2 and convert that to the form a plus ib. If you would like to do this, go ahead and pause the video now and work it out and then start the video again once you're done. Hopefully, working this out, you were able to find that z is equal to minus 2i, which means that a is equal to 0 and b is equal to negative 2. You can also go the opposite direction. So suppose we have z equals 3 plus 4i, and we want to convert that to the form z equals r times e to the i theta. In that case, we need to do a little trigonometry. So if you go back to this sort of picture of the complex number as being a vector in the complex plane, you can realize that if a is the x component and b is the y component, r is just the hypotenuse of that triangle, or it's the length of that vector. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the length of r is. So in particular, r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, or in this case, 3 squared plus 4 squared. Take the square root of that and you get 5. To figure out theta, we just need to do some trigonometry in terms of tangent. And so in particular, if you take the ratio of b over a, you realize that's going to be r sine theta divided by r cosine theta, which is just equal to the tangent of theta, because our r's cancel out. 
And so then we take the arctangent of b over a, which is the arctangent of 4 thirds, and find that theta is equal to 0.927 radians. So z equals 3 plus 4i is equivalent to 5 times e to the 0.927 times i. If you'd like another example, we have this one, convert z equals 12 minus 5i to the form z equals r times e to the i theta. Go ahead and pause this video and try working this one out exactly like we did the previous one. And hit play when you're ready to resume. Once again, the solution involves using the Pythagorean theorem. And we have r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, or the square root of 12 squared plus negative 5 squared, which is just 13. And we can use the arctangent of b over a, or the arctangent of negative 5 over 12, which is equal to negative 0.443 radians to find theta. And so in this case, z is equal to 13 times e to the minus 0.443 times i. Now complex numbers arise in many different areas of math and science. You've seen them surely, for example, in the case of factoring. If you want to factor something like x squared plus 4, you need to do it using complex numbers. So the factorization of this is x plus 2i times x minus 2i. And you can see this by go ahead and multiplying this out. So if you multiply this out, you get x squared plus 2 times ix, minus 2 times ix, minus 4i squared. So obviously these middle two terms cancel. We get, and we're left with x squared minus 4 times i squared, which is just negative 1 squared, or square root of negative 1 squared, or negative 1. Or in other words, x squared plus 4. So it checks. Now in quantum mechanics, the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, the so-called wave functions, are often complex. And so we need to be able to work with complex numbers. One particular operation that comes up a lot is this idea of complex conjugation. So the complex conjugate, z star, of some complex number z is just given as follows. So if z is equal to a plus ib, the complex conjugate z star is equal to a minus ib. That is, to find the complex conjugate, we just replace each occurrence of i in our complex number with negative i. And so for example, if we have z equals 12 minus 5i, its complex conjugate is just 12 plus 5i. If we have z equals 3 times e to the i pi, its complex conjugate is z is 3 times e to the minus i pi. We have z equals 2 plus 3i plus 4i squared plus 5i cubed, then the complex conjugate is equal to 2 plus 3 times negative i plus 4 times negative i squared plus 5 times negative i cubed. And you go ahead and multiply that out, you end up getting 2 minus 3i plus 4i squared minus 5i cubed. Now of course if you wanted you could simplify this further using the identities that for example i squared is equal to negative 1, i cubed is equal to negative i, and so on. But I'm going to leave it here for now. Now one important property involving complex conjugates is the fact that the product of a complex number and its complex conjugate is real. So if we take z star times z, we get a minus ib times a plus ib, multiply that out and you get a squared plus iab minus iab minus i squared times b squared. Now again, these middle terms cancel i squared is just negative 1, so we get a squared minus negative 1 times b squared, or just a squared plus b squared. And notice that all our i's have disappeared, so this is a real quantity. It's no longer complex. And of course the op order of operations doesn't matter with multiplication for general numbers, and so it doesn't matter whether we talk about z star times z, or z times z star, they're both going to give us the same result. And so we often just adopt this shorthand notation with these vertical bars and a square. So we call this the modulus squared, or for short, the mod square of z. And this property, this operation comes up a lot in quantum mechanics, and so you'll be doing this frequently. With that, that ends this video. If you want to learn more about complex numbers, you can go ahead and see the review chapter in Macquarie on complex numbers and also look at some of the sample problems there.